whether it's a major power outage or just a short-term interruption in your service, backup power is always a great thing to have. In this short video, I'll share with you what the Duracell generator can power and I'll show you how simple it is to connect solar panels. Hi, I'm Star. Welcome to That Backyard Life. Thanks for watching. Before these generators were popular, they were $399. Now they appear to be going up a little every year. If you're looking for affordable, easy to use solar system, I'm going to share with you what this one can offer. Now even though it weighs a little more than a gas generator that you see on the right, it doesn't require gas, gas treatment or oil changes and it's for indoor use. They are super quiet. This is as loud as it gets. They're equipped with four AC outlets that you can use just like you use your home outlets and they power up to 440 watts of power. I've used this to charge and power cell phones, laptops, gaming systems, a television and I've watched a couple of DVDs. The biggest question I get is can it power my refrigerator and freezer? The answer is yes. Using this extension cord and this timer I was able to power my regular size refrigerator and a small deep freezer for three days on a full battery but an unlimited amount of time when using the solar panels. It has one 12 volt DC outlet and two USB ports. The UPS feature is awesome for medical equipment should the main power go out anything that's plugged in here will kick on within a half a second. It came with a power cord and an accessory socket which comes in handy for awkward sized plugs. I've used several sealed lead acid battery generators and I'm quite pleased with this door sale. It has a nice storage compartment on top where everything fits neatly. During a power outage, we never ever use this for lighting or lamps, but for testing purposes, in the USB I have the ring light plugged in and the awkward plug right there, I have my grow lights plugged in, it will power both. It's expandable, which is something I was looking for, dependability and expandability, really simple, positive and negative connections, you can connect another sealed lead acid battery to double the power. Right here is where you would plug it into your regular house outlet to charge it from your home. The white and red connections down here are where you plug in the solar panels. It does have one 15 amp fuse and it does support a 100 watt solar panel which is simple, really simple to connect. The white and red connections are where the solar panel will be connected to the generator. These are the MC4 connectors that will be connected to the solar panel. This other end is the Anderson connectors which they're black and red but it's still positive and negative connections and they plug right into the white and red connections on the actual generator. They indicate which is positive and which is negative and they simply click right into the solar panel connections. They really are simple connections and they come in different lengths because the solar panels are going to be on the outside and the generator stays indoors. These are the connectors coming from the solar panel and these are the connectors coming from the generator that I'll connect to the solar panel. Just like with the generators, the prices of the solar panels have increased as well. I got these a few years ago. I used the rich solar panels. They're not the most expensive panels, but they work just fine. At the time I got them, they were two for $149. During a power outage, I would never use these to cook. This is for testing purposes only. I have a video that I use my Coleman stove. You can check that out. But it did run the microwave, the toaster, the blender, a hot dog steamer, and my dehydrator. It just takes a lot of power. The 12 volt blankets, it heats very effectively and doesn't use that much power from the DC port. I also use it to charge other smaller generators. Even though it's my most economical generator, I'm very pleased with the Duracell. It does hold a charge for about six months. So if you're only using it for emergency purposes, you want to pull it out about every six months and recharge it. The batteries never go to zero, but I've caught them at 40 and 60% and I hadn't used them at all. So if you're storing it, you do have to pull it out to recharge it so that it's ready when you need it. All of these are sealed lead acid batteries, but I'm quite pleased with the Duracell and definitely would recommend it. I won't give it five stars only because of the weight, but I'll give it four stars because it can power everything these other generators can and it's very simple to use. Just like our other generators, the Duracell will power small heaters, but I never use it for heaters or for any lamps. I use rechargeable flashlights and solar powered lights. They just work more effective. Even the dollar store lights, they don't come with solar panels, but they're really effective and come in handy in an emergency. If you're thinking about getting a backup generator, hopefully this video gave you an idea of what the Duracell generator can power. I haven't done a review yet on the Go Zero. I've been using that for a few years, but I have done a review on the Nature's Generator. The link will be at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. Enjoy the rest of your day.